Namaste. How's it going? For a healthy, uh, pain-free back bends, we need to learn how to extend our spine to the vertical first before curling back. Why so? If we curl back too fast without allowing the spine to open up, yeah, the lower back will contract. And as a way of defensing our body from the pressure, we will shift forward, we will bounce forward. And that could potentially hurt your lower spine. And yeah, would eventually cause discomfort, of course. And we don't want that. We don't want pain when we practice deeper elements such as back pains. So for the day, I will be sharing with you a drill you can do in conjunction with your self-practice. All right, so one arm distance away from the wall, you know, we stand, feet are hip width. Yeah, important, don't open legs wide. Yeah, hip width distance so we can really engage and then maximize and then utilize the strength of our thighs and the hips. Okay, now uh, we will be applying the drill we had last time about the energy swaying. Yeah, so as we work our way up to the vertical, you know, rubbing from side to side, you know, like you're turning gears inside the body. You know, again, yeah, inside the body, it's not perfectly symmetrical. Yeah, there are like lines and pockets there, you yeah. know, tight spots, and then you want to yeah, release those you know, stagnation, yeah. mm -hmm. the shoulders and the hips, yeah. you can lightly march in place and then sway side to side, and at the same time, curling up already, swaying, okay, and then you might rest the hands, so you can lightly shift forward and back. And then the neck, the shoulders, lifting up, rising forward and upwards. Exhale to your heels. Inhale, forward and upwards. Exhale to the heels. All right. And if the shoulders and the neck feel heavy, yeah, release the technique. Yeah, you can do a light side stretch there. Good. And then coiling in and out like you're rubbing. Yeah, circling around the hips. All right, and the tongue too. All right, now breathing in up to the vertical. Remember, we're extending up to the vertical. You know, we're not curling back yet, but it looks like externally I'm curling back already. But because my spine is so open already, because of that adjustment, yeah, you will feel light that there's no way but for you to suspend backwards. All right, or forward for that matter. Yeah, but we're going to try and maximize it. Crawl, 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 even if you can see the wall behind you already. Don't rush. Yeah, you might release the shoulders, adjusting the legs, walking in place. All right, you may move a little bit closer to the wall. Yeah, arm bones forward, the lesson of arm bones forward. Up, and then reach backwards, but not drop too soon. Yeah, reach backwards, but upwards. Backwards, but upwards. Good, and... Yes. Yeah, so you're able now to touch the wall without you collapsing, without you bending the knees. You don't want to be compensating by bending the knees. Yeah, because if you bend the knees, your lower back will scoop. So you want a long line yeah, from your feet up to your fingertips. Yeah. And then wave around. Breathing in. You can also inhale as you shift your heels. Inhale. Yeah, so you can lengthen behind the sacrum and backwards, but keep reaching upwards. Beautiful. And to come up, breathing in and exhale. Yes. So the body feels open. And then the spine, no. Yeah. The spine feels loose, feels light. Yeah, but you can feel the foundation, the thighs, you can feel the hips, and even you can feel the core, and then the muscles <laughs> between the spaces of our ribs, and then you can also adjust side to side. Remember, back bend is not just about curling back. There are many aspects surrounding it, like it's a side stretch, yeah, it's to make room for the body parts getting in the way to release, yeah. It's circling, yeah, to loosen, yeah, like you're churning inside the body, yeah. And then when all of those hindrances are gone, suspending either forward or backwards feels light. Yeah, such that you can already express it to the full potential of reaching up, forward, reaching backwards and up, 
And then adjust. You might walk a little bit away from the wall. No, but keep reaching high. Keep reaching high. Keep reaching up. See? I'm just walking. And I'm opening. Or oh, probably you can go deeper. Of course, this will require time. But this is the essence. You're stable. The foundation of the thighs and the hips is supporting you. And to come up, inhaling and exhaling. You can also, yeah, see, yeah, no pain. Yeah? Spine relax, but really the muscles are working. You can apply that kneeling, like the Ostrasana. All right? When you apply that to kneeling, let me move closer to the wall. Okay, same principle. Yeah, yeah waving, walking those knees. You can lightly tip backwards, forward, and upwards, upwards, upwards. Backwards and upwards, and touch. Yeah, I'm not bending at the knees, neither I'm collapsing my hips. Strong, and you may touch the wall behind you, or you can do your Ustrasana. Okay, and once you go back to your uh, practice, the self practice, you will feel the elements just go light and free. And then you can yeah, do a recovery by doing a side bend like that and then easing up and down. I'm involving my tongue. I can <laughs> coil in and out of my shoulders and the hips. Okay, then, yeah, continue. You can now do your flow. You can do your Kapotasana, you can do your Strasana, or you can do your Danyarasana. You know, it's important you prepare the spine ready before you approach those deeper elements. Good luck, and I'll see you in the next video. Namaste.